Morning, Kate. Good morning. Hello. Hi. Hello, love. Hi. How are you? Thank you. That's good. You ready for another double bubble? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. yes, no. Fabulous. Well, hopefully we'll um, just let a few more people in for the next minute or two. So bear with me. Let's go into the waiting room. Okay, pop you guys on mute anyway. Okay. Right, well, the good news is we'll be doing some different work, uh, different areas of the body today. So we're not doing so much four-point kneeling. So we're giving our lovely arms a bit of a rest. Um, doing a bit more balance work as well. So it should be quite um, fun for first thing in the morning, try and wake ourselves up. So let me go and let everyone in. Um, and bear with. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, Kate. There we are. All righty. Okay. So we'll let Rachel and Julia join us as and when. Okay, we'll get going. I see Sally and Alison at home and everyone else wants to join in on the recording this week or catch up. Good morning. Okay, so we're going to be doing a, a lovely, there we are, mixed ability class this morning. Bear with. Okay. There we go. Okay, so mixed ability class. Hi, Julia. Hi. I think Rachel will be joining us shortly. Okay, so we're going to do a mixed ability class. Just saying then we're going to be doing a class which is mostly um, um, our lower body and lower limbs, a little bit of core work as well, but less of these arms of a bit of a rest until right at the end we're going to do a sneaky little bit of extra work just to make sure we're still building on the work we did last week. So there is some random reason in our class uh, and our term planning. Okay, so hope for all, hopefully we're all okay this morning. I haven't done a, a question. Are you feeling okay, Julia? Take it easy with your rib, okay? <laughs> Take it easy. You should be nice and steady on your ribs today. Um, as always, please work within your natural range. Don't feel like you press anything or push anything too far. Um, and just take it steady as we are in Zoom. Um, okay, so first of all, just bringing ourselves into the room with our lovely postural checkup. Okay, so your hands are just relaxing down by your sides. We've worked a little bit in the last couple of weeks about making sure it's a slight, a gentle opening of the chest and shoulders back rather than just pressing the hands behind you. Okay, so just think about that sense, the shoulder blades slightly drawing together behind you, back and down towards the pelvis. And when you're ready, you're just going to close your eyes if you're comfortable and breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. Okay. And we're going to go straight ahead and think about this lovely upper, and upper body breathing. So we're just drawing that breath in, expanding these lungs like balloons and filling this upper thoracic space. And maybe the first one or two breaths this morning, maybe feel, feel like you're having a really nice big breath in. Not too extreme, but just really fill those lungs and then notice the skeleton as it moves and accommodates that lovely filling of the lungs. OK, so just two or three big breaths in. And then settle yourself into your natural breathing pattern. As you're breathing in and you're starting to just settle the breath, remind yourself your feeling of that lovely growth of through the crown of the head, almost as if you're hanging gently from that elastic band from the ceiling and those feet just barely touch the ground. You're almost just light and weightless under the soles of the feet, okay? You're trying to lift yourself as if you could and levitate by a millimeter off the ground with that breath in. And then as you exhale, drawing in through the core and of course the pelvic floor area. So you're really thinking of that straight away, switching on that core activation of the pelvic floor for the next four breaths out, okay? So in your own time, just engaging, drawing in and up through to your center with two more lovely breaths. And our final breath, when you're ready, breathing in, growing tall, feeling light and weightless, exhale and draw yourself in and up. Opening your eyes, bring yourselves back into the room, guys, and just pop your hands across your chest. And once you do that, remind yourself to pull the shoulder blades back and down again, okay? So sometimes the activation of the arms towards the front Hunches the back. So remind yourself to check, pull back the shoulder blades back and down. Okay. So I'm just going to get you to do a very simple piece of um, weight distribution. I want you to breathe in. And as you exhale, try and uh, allow your body to just press a little bit more into your left 
heel, okay? So if you need to step off the mat because you find it's too squishy and you can't get that response from the floor, go ahead. But it's totally up to you. Depends on your squishiness of the mat. So you're just going to exhale and try and allow the weight of the body just to press ever so slightly into one heel and then the other as you exhale. Now you might find to do this, it might just be simply a releasing of maybe the muscles around the opposing kneecap. Perhaps you need to relax the opposite kneecap slightly. Perhaps the sense of weight is not easy for you to press into the foot, but actually to feel like you're trying to lift and elevate off the opposite foot is the trigger you need in your brain to get you to shift from side to side. And of course, we try not to rock from side to side, but we're trying to let the body mass just sink, okay? So that may work for you, it may not quite work for you, which is fine. Bring yourself back into a nice even weight distribution. And now we're going to just take ourselves into ankle rotation. So breathe in, strong through the core, so we're not trying to rock over to the side, just lifting your heel and your foot and just ankle rotations. Okay, we're just going to work a little bit on these lower limbs. So I want to make sure we get our maximum range before we start. Reversing direction, just rolling around as you can, as is comfortable for you on that ankle and switch sides. Nice and steady and strong through the standing foot as you lift your opposite leg and rotate through the ankle. Okay, and reversing direction there. And place, feet, place both feet back down again and get nice and evenly balanced between the two. Into our knee folds, guys. So breathe in. Exhale. And as you do so, imagine your back is sliding down a wall and just let the knees track towards your toes without the heels lifting. And a big, big pull in of that belly to spine as you come down, all right? Because that will help you stay nice and upright as opposed to hunching forwards and into your hinge with the knee fold, okay? So bring the belly and pelvic floor area in as you drop down. Big breath in, exhaling on the way down, exhale, exhale. And quite a bit of a press on the knees down towards these toes, okay? Let's stretch the back of the calf area. Let's stretch the back of the Achilles, the tendons around the back of the, the um, ankle. And we're going to pause this next time you're down, okay? So just gently pausing down here and pause. Taking your right heel now. Can you go ahead and lift that right heel onto the balls of the foot? Now drawing the belly, drawing the pelvic floor because we need that stability through the pelvis nice and strong and pulled in and knitted before we go into our toe touch. And from toe touch, we're going to see if we can attempt our knee lift without lifting and twisting the pelvis, without lifting and straightening that um, supporting knee. It's a gentle lift of the knee on the right and toe touch down. Breathe in when you're down, exhale when you're up. Okay, breathe in, exhale. And we're gonna hold the, this next time the knee is raised. If you can, that might be a little bit too much, in which case you can just take yourself down to a gentle toe touch. And we're going to have our arms now sink down by our sides into our standard standing position. And we're going to now add on. I'm gonna just go back to the knee raise so I can show you from here. Keeping the body nice and upright, we're going to send the leg to the back of the room or mat and the arms forwards to shoulder height but there's no lean or hinge in the upper body, okay? So this is a bit of a moving balance now. If you had your toe in toe touch because you find the lift difficult, you can just work towards that toe touch slide, okay? So you're sliding from front and to back. So each touch just stabilizes you, but you get the movement nonetheless, okay? If you're working with your knee raised, you're trying to really support yourself on that wobbling ankle. We've got one more. And we're going to pause with the leg behind and arms. So everyone can now come with the leg behind. That's it, well done. So you've got those two points down which should help us stabilize. Bring your hands into prayer position for me. And I'd like you to take a hinge forwards now. Your supporting knee still bent, don't forget. Breathe in, and this is a hinge, not a curve. You're thinking of bringing your upper body forwards and it is flat or as flat as you can be. Now this might be enough for you, okay? So we're going to now take our leg and we're going to slide it across behind you, okay? So that's towards the left and then back to center and touch to the left and to center your supporting hip is probably getting a big old workout now. So this is just a couple more. Well done. And come back to center. Now we're going to hinge a little bit more deeply and just see if we can lift that back leg for four. If you find that too much, you can continue with the side taps, okay? If not, we're going to try and lift that back leg. We have to really work hard on that supporting leg. We've just got two more. 
and we've got one more and then gently bringing that back leg into this parallel position hands down by your sides and give those legs a shake off okay all righty so we're going to head on to the other side so just uh, pull yourself into your postural checkup first nicely weighted over the heels and then we're going to sink now into that lovely knee fold pausing with the knee fold wonderful well done hands across our chest to begin with okay so regrouping i'm going to stand on this side we're going to now lift the left heel and just double check you've got that belly pulled into spine pelvic floors are in that will help the stability of the pelvis for this lovely knee raise when you're ready into your toe touch when you feel like you're still nice and stable your core is strong shoulder blades down go ahead and lift your knee into your knee raise single knee raise with a breath in when you're down and exhale when you're up okay guys Big exhale, that means you're really pulling that belly to spine. And when we knit these muscles in around here, you'll find there's a lot less pressure then on that supporting leg, okay? So you're really helping out the major groups by finding those core muscles. And if of course this is too big for the knee raise, you can just do a small toe touch, that's fine, a small hop in between. And the next time you're going to choose your height of knee raise and pause there. From here, we're then sinking our hands down by our sides into our postural checkup, hands down. And we're going to then take our leg into extension behind us and our arms come forward. However, we're not leaning, you're just extending the limbs from this central position and back into your knee, raise arms down by your sides. Breathing in, exhale, no lean, just reach the leg behind you, reach the hands from your shoulder joint. Exhale. Nice stretch through that leg. It should feel a little bit of a stretch through the front of the hip flexors, which is glorious engagement of the glute. And this is our last one where we stay with the leg behind us and pause here, bringing your hands into prayer position. So you're popping your thumbs by your chest. Okay, we're gonna hinge now guys. So breathe in, exhale and hinging slightly. And now we're taking our leg across behind us. So it'll be heading over towards the right hand side and back to center, breathe in. Now, of course, you're trying to control this upper body so it doesn't twist. We're not looking to twist with the move. You're just letting the leg move in its hip socket. Well done, we've got two more. And we've got a final one. Now you can choose to do one more set or you can hinge a little bit more deeply, tummy in, and we're going in for our single leg lift, okay? We're only doing four. So if you're just doing the repetitions across the side, this is our last two. And our final one. And then draw yourself back up, 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 into standing, releasing the arms, well done. Go ahead and take those legs out wide now. Let's distribute the weight and that's have a bit, of a bit of a wider stance. Now your toes are facing out towards the corners of the mat for me and heels are quite close in. So you've got that really turned out position if you can for me. Take your hands and just press them, place them across your chest. So you've got your fingers facing each other and your palms are facing in. Okay, wonderful. We're going to just mobilize through the knees just slightly here. So take it nice and steady. We don't need to be too deep. Equally, ladies and gents, if you're um, feet are too close you won't get much movement but that might be okay for you if you've got any hip issues however if you take your um, if you can take your legs wider that would be really beneficial so we're going to start no arms but we're just going to gently take our left kneecap and ease it towards the left side of the mat not too deep to begin with and now you'll know if you're heading too far to the side if your kneecap tracks over the toes you need to widen your stance slightly Okay, so you want to be just about heading to the point where your knee is roughly around about the ankle or the toes. And you might start to feel that stretch of the inner thighs and you might be able to just build up to it a little bit more with confidence each time. And of course, working around the knee joint, which is good. Okay, so adjusting to where you feel comfortable as you get a bit more confident, as I say, perhaps maybe you can wiggle those legs a little bit deeper. And we're going to add in our arms. So as we track to the side, we're going to open our arms like a book and squeeze the shoulder blades together. So we're nice and broad. Come back into center. Shoulders stay down. Breathe in. Exhale. Open wide and reach those arms. OK, keep gently pressing the shoulders down from the ears. Remember, as we did last week, a little tiny couple of weights on your shoulders, keeping the shoulders low, low, low. Last two. Breathing in. Exhale. 
and stretch, last one, breathe in, exhale, open wide and come back through to center. Now I would like you to turn your toes slightly forward. So you've got yourselves now with your feet almost in parallel to the end of the mat. So as opposed to turning out, just bring them slightly in. And I want you to bring your hands and just clasp them into your chest, okay? So now we're not necessarily in prayer, but just clasping over one over the other. Now I'm gonna show you this piece before we dive into it, just to make sure you feel comfortable. We are pressing our bottoms back now behind us, and we're going to think about our chest almost coming towards our knee or thigh. So in a much deeper, deeper position, okay? Looking forward, shoulders still square to the front of the mat, coming back into your center and breathe in. Again, your range is up to you. You might just head halfway. You might be able to get that chest quite a lot further down towards that supporting thigh, but it's up to you. Okay, again, just feel that comfort for the feet as well. If you need to turn and adjust the position of the feet, go ahead. Okay, so working a little bit more now, you might feel around the back of your bottoms and the back of our hamstring area and our quads as we come back up. Okay, well done, we've got just two more. Breathe in and exhale as you come up, breathe in. Exhale and pause here, wonderful. Taking those hands now, place them behind you. Roll the shoulder blades back and down, okay? Mimicking the dart, you may recall last week, the double leg kick where we pulled those hands down towards our bottoms, rolled our shoulders right back and open. From here, we're going to roll down. So bring the belly in and see how we get on. Tuck your chin into your chest and just gently peeling down. No need to get too far or worry too much about the the flow of the roll down this first time, just rolling down and then rolling back up, okay? Taking a lovely deep breath. Exhale and roll down. We're going to do three. Okay, and on our third one, we're going to pause down. Again, you may want to adjust the positioning of your feet now for this particular roll down totally up to you. Pausing on the way down this next time, if you feel comfortable here, if you want to bend your knees, you're more than welcome. Straight legs a little bit more into the hamstrings. We're going to then lift the arms now, not the legs, arms up towards the sky. And just think about that gentle pull of the arms behind and up. And perhaps you can take a couple of breaths here as the hamstring starts to stretch. The back of the legs, posterior chain, then over the back starts to relax then we're going to let the hands go down to the floor and if you can reach the floor that's superb if you can't don't worry just hang out here and then if you can think about your hands now heading towards one foot we're just going to say hello to that side of the mat and then we're going to walk our hands across to the other side of the mat or to the other opposite leg and pause and to the first side and of course here you might start to feel we're getting a little bit more of a stretch and movement into that lower lumbar spine from side to side or either side of it. And then we're going to gently peel back up. Again, if you need to bend your knees to bring yourself back up, do also bring in your core and your pelvic floor area just to help you come back up into standing. And we're into standing, wonderful. We walk our legs back in by just gently taking a heel toe meander back into parallel okay so if you're nice and comfortable and feet come into parallel one more time so we're going to roll down here we haven't done rolls down roll downs in a traditional style for quite some time if you wish to bend your knees please feel free to bend into the first roll down standing in our postural check let's take chin oh the challenge this morning the challenge for you all this morning is Keeping the chin in. I want you to think, is my chin in the whole way down? It tends to get to a point where take, people tend to stop about halfway and just check out where they're going, and then the chin comes away. I want you to think right now, your chin is glued to the chest, okay? From here, we're going to start our roll down, bring the belly to spine, starting the roll down. That chin is staying into the chest. It stays into the chest even when you're heading halfway down, you keep looking to that belly button, looking to that pubic bone area, and then you're rolling down. When you're in your roll down, bring that belly to spine, okay? And just gently think about tilting the pubic bone away from you. You might get a slightly deeper stretch in the back of the hamstrings, okay? But we just took that pelvis out of the way to allow ourselves to dig, dig a little deeper into the roll down. When you're ready to come back up, as I say, you can always bend your knees, Tuck that chin in, 
and talk to the glue. Keep sticky, 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 glue to chest, glue to chest. Makes my voice sound a little bit weird. And then we're coming up. And that means I kind of know that it's glued in. Okay, we're gonna do that again. Breathe in, taking your chin to chest. Go ahead, glue it there. Down we go. Staying in, 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 still glued in, still glued in. Belly nicely pulling into that spine. Still glued in with the chin. Still glued in, you're still looking somewhere at that belly. Push your pubic bone away from you ever so slightly if you can. And then when you're ready, peeling back up, chin in, chin in, chin in. And glued in, 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 in. And into standing, okay. Pausing here, just cast one eye towards me as we draw our toes together, but the heels stay where they are. This is a developed, it's a pigeon, for obvious reasons, a pigeon roll down, okay? So a slight development. Our toes are together and our knees are still parallel as are our heels. I want you to just gently knee fold. Now, when the knee fold happens, of course, your knees come, want to knock together. Try and keep them in that parallel position, okay? So toes together, heels apart, knees apart. From here, we're going to just do a half roll down. And what we've done is we've gently broadened across the spine by internally rotating these sides. We pull the muscles wide. See how it feels for you this morning, okay? From here, tuck that chin, glue it in, and we're just gonna half roll down. So you're hanging like a rag doll. So rolling down, rolling down, and just pause in that hands, probably around about the knees, maybe perhaps the top of your shins, and then peel back up, keeping those knees as if they've got a tennis ball between them and into standing. We're gonna do two more, breathe in, chin to chest and rolling down making sure you've got that lovely tennis ball between the knees, the belly's put into spine. And we get a bit more of a stretch across the top of your pelvis and across the side of your spine. And our last one, breathing in. Chin into chest, remember still, so really make sure that we're stretching, if you like, from the top of the spine to the base. Okay, and then peel yourself back up into standing, bring the legs into straight leg position and into your knee fold, wonderful. Okay, so from here we're going to sit. So just taking yourself down onto your mats. Okay, and I'm going to face uh, you guys, but you might actually want yourselves to just face down the length of the mat, that is fine. But just so you can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna be facing this way for the next few minutes. Okay, so you're gonna be sat with your legs bent, Okay, and quite a lot wider than when we would normally have our legs towards the front. Okay, so go ahead and widen your legs and bring your toes up towards your kneecaps. Okay, so what I want you to do is hopefully feel that this isn't going to be niggling anything that you worked on last week. Okay, so belly in, we've softened all our joints and then take your hands and place them behind, behind the back of your head. So we're still trying to find a bit of lift on the sit bones, but perhaps not necessarily so vertical as we have been previously. Okay, so from here, we're going to just take, now I will turn slightly so you can see. Okay, so we're gonna just take a slight turn. Let's go ahead towards our right knee. Just turn as if you're about to do a saw and have a look at that right knee, right foot. And we're going to think now about nose coming to knee. I want you to gently ease your upper body forwards and that nose is gently coming towards that right kneecap. And then bring yourself back up and look center square down between your feet. Let's go ahead and rotate towards the left side of knee and foot. And then bring in the nose down towards that left kneecap. Okay, and then drawing yourself back up. So I'm digging a little bit more deeply into the side lower spine here. Center and then to the right, nose coming towards the knee. Almost like that rib cage is trying to pull down towards the thigh and bring yourself back to center. And go ahead towards your final side. And we're going to add on here. Okay, bring yourself back to center. Now we're going to take ourselves to the right side one more time. Go ahead and face the right side and bring your knee and nose together. So let's go ahead, down. Now I want you to think about the left elbow. You may recall a mermaid, we we're doing some lateral lifting last week. So that left elbow is now gonna to lift towards the sky and you're going to try and look out towards the left side of your room or your, just your knee and toes on the left and enjoy that stretch. Breathe in, 
Exhale, and then bring yourself back to parallel down towards your knee on the right and sitting up, bring yourself to center of your mat between your feet. Breathe in, grow tall, shoulder blades down still, and then over towards the left side, knee to nose. Checking out the left kneecap, let's lift the right elbow, and now we look at your right knee, right foot, right side of the room. Bring yourself into, sorry, have one breath in here. Then bring yourself back into parallel, looking down towards that left knee and peel yourself back up to center. We're gonna do one more either side. Grow tall, shoulder blades down. Let's rotate to the right. And knee and nose become friends. Left elbow lift, check out the left side. Breathe in. Don't miss that breath if you can. When we've got into that twist, add into it, digging deep by lifting, uh, expanding the muscles with our lovely breath in. Left knee for our final time. Right elbow lift, pause while we have our breath in this space. Looking down to the left kneecap and peeling yourself back up, up, up into sitting. Gorgeous. Releasing the hands and bring your legs together. Now, if you aren't sitting along the mat, please go ahead and do so. We're going to take ourselves into the rollback. If you do need any supporting cushions or anything that helps you with the rollback, go ahead and plop that behind. If you know you're a leg swinger, you know that you really struggle, maybe the first one or two, go ahead and see if you might want to fold, double fold your mat. You might want to put a towel underneath there or a jumper. Um, and if you do so, you're not sitting on it. It's about an inch or so behind that, lumbar, that lower part of your spine, okay, where you are sitting currently. Okay, so let's all go ahead and start with our legs as ladders. So we're going to sit nice and tall, shoulder blades back and down, and let's get some space between these vertebrae. Here we breathe in, and remember the week one or two, we have a little glass on our head. Now let's tuck our chin to chest and start with a tiny mini tilt of the pelvis. Now we're going to pull the belly button as if it's pulling through towards the mat, and our arms come into, into extension. And we're going to go ahead straight on down to the mat. If you need to use your legs as little ladders to call, release you down, go ahead and release down onto the mat. We're going to have our knees bent for the worst first one or two, or the worst one or two, and our arms come overhead. We are going to breathe in. Now we're going to exhale, bring our arms overhead, tuck our chin to chest and start to peel into sitting. Using, 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 using those legs if you need to pull yourself back up and sit nice and tall. Okay, so we're gonna do one more here, breathe in. Exhale, find a mini tiny tilt first, open the lumbar spine. Now keep thinking a long spine, even as you track down onto the mat. Keep the space between the vertebrae if you can. Arms coming overhead and breathe in. And exhale to peel yourself back up, pulling that rib cage towards the pelvis as you sit up and sit tall. Okay, so you might find that is a level that's perfectly okay for you this morning and or frankly quite enough. Alternatively, you can take the legs out and bring those toes towards your kneecaps and roughly hip width apart, okay? And we're going to sit nice and tall. Now we're going to start the same pro process as before, tiny, tiny tuck of the pelvis and then releasing down, thinking of that spine still nice, nice and long as you release down, release down, release down, release down. Toes still pulling towards your knees. So we're almost pressing the heels to the side of the room. As your arms come overhead, now point the toes. And we're familiar with this, almost like a full mat stretch here. But before we come up, we pull the toes one more time towards our knees. If your knees are bent and you're enjoying that type of stretch, then you, uh, that type of roll back, then go ahead and bring yourself back up. Everyone else, breathe in, exhale. Still pulling towards your toes, almost like you're pulling yourself with a rope that's attached to those toes and up into sitting this morning. We're just gonna sit tall, breathe in and exhale back. Remember, tiny tilt as you head back, long lumbar spine, trying to place each vertebrae down on the mat, slightly further away from the one below it every time. Okay, breathing in and point. Up into your lovely lifted toes and into your rolling up, 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 up and sit nice and tall, gorgeous, well done. Okay, so from here, we're going to take ourselves into, um, uh, we're, now we're going to bring ourselves into a bridge position. So taking your feet up towards your hip bottoms, release down, okay, and you're into your bridge setup or supine lying position, arms are by your sides. Okay, now remember we've talked before about that sense of standing into your arms, okay? So I want you to feel a little bit of press of your arms into the mat, almost like you were trying to levitate your body and your torso off the mat. 
However, just like with the heels at the beginning, it's just a sense of turning one set of muscles on and one set of muscles off, to be honest. OK, I would like you to just lift your right knee into your chest. So beyond tabletop, go ahead and pull that right knee right on in to the chest and place it back down on the floor. Lift your left foot and draw your left knee into your chest. Pull it in, pull it in, stand into those arms. OK, and now we're going to bring the right knee in, standing into the arms, i.e. pressing down into the arms. Can you lift your buttocks? or your buttock off the floor. Okay, place the bottom down and your foot comes to settle back down on the floor. Keep that chin into your chest, please guys. Sometimes it can feel as a bit of tension in that neck area. I want this to be in the arms as you lift and bring your other knee into your chest. Bottom lift if it's available to you. Okay, breathe in, exhale. Right knee in, bottom lift and stand into the arms. Done correctly, you should feel that there's quite a lot of effort now going into the back of those arms, even the triceps that we were working last week. Okay, those guys will be firing up. And pause there, pause there, and just relax the arms for a moment. That is our level one this morning, guys, and you may want to just continue this next time with that level. If you feel like you're a little bit more able and you have done any work previously overhead, you can go ahead and bring both these into your chest. So choose guys, you can choose here. You can choose the previous level or we're going to breathe in, stand into the arms and attempt to bring both knees in towards your nose, lifting your pelvis and lower spine off the mat and peeling back down. Now this is may, one of those ones you might try, you just think, no, I just cannot do that. And that is absolutely fine, okay? Because you have your other level to practice. Yes, you have your previous level to continue practicing. If you're able to, breathing in, you're exhaling, drawing both knees in, and you're trying to peel that lower lumbar spine, almost like you're trying to, um, um, almost like doing a reverse curl, lifting your buttocks and peeling up, and the shoulders nice and strong as you peel back down. Breathing in, exhale, big exhale. And you might slowly start to feel you can get a little bit further, for those of you who might feel a little bit more advanced, you're more than welcome to work higher up the spine if that is available to you. And our last one. I'm feeling that down, down, down. Well done, gorgeous. For everybody now, both legs are down and extended towards the end of the mat and wide. So both legs are long. Go ahead and pop them out the corners of the mat so they're nice and wide and long. So you've made a Y shape with the legs. And I want you to mimic that Y shape with the arms. Go ahead and bring them over towards the floor or mat behind you. And again, you're in a Y shape. So we created our starfish. If you're looking down at us from the ceiling, um, we are nice and broad with our arms and legs. Okay. Now bring that belly to spine, please. This is important. And the pelvic floor area. So for a couple of breaths, just breathe in. Feel the body and torso expanding in as you exhale, draw in through the core and pelvic floor area. One more time, breathe in, feel the whole body expanding. And maybe you can stretch and reach a little bit more with that breath in as you exhale, zip and hollow. Okay, so we're gonna start with alternate arm lift. So breathing in exactly the same way, exhale, zip and hollow and a single arm lift where your palm comes up towards the sky and then lowers back down, breathing in. Exhale, opposite arm lifts and back down. Okay, so this is quite an unusual position for our arm to be in, okay? Not only is it straight, and not only are we using our, uh, sorry, our, our shoulder joint in a particular fashion against gravity, but also um, we are not allowing the elbow to bend. Ordinarily, you would probably rotate the arm and use this motion here, okay? So it might get a little bit unusual, a little bit uncomfortable. So just work within your range, tiny lifts if needs be. And pause off this next lift. And stopping there. Okay, so now we're into our legs. Slightly more familiar um, range of movement for the legs. We're going to breathe in, exhale, and really bring that belly to spine. And it's a single leg lift and lower. Now this is quite extraordinarily hard, all right? So you need to really think about bringing that belly in and really, really bringing in the pelvic floor area. It might be that all you can get is the smallest of moves or to the point where you almost just float the leg 
but actually the leg is still touching the mat. That is fine as well. Okay, you don't have to get the lift. Okay, and pause there. Well done. Bring your knees into chest for a moment and bring your hands onto your knees and draw small circles just to massage in that lower spine. So you may decide that one of those levels was not for you. It may be that the legs are working too heavily into your back. It may be that you have arm impingement and you'd rather just do the legs. That is fine. We are going to add on now and do opposite arm and leg. So you can choose if you want to modify yourself to just do one more repetition or set of uh, one more set leg pardon, of arms or legs. If not, go back into your starfish. Breathe in, exhale. Now we're going to lift alternate arm and leg. So opposite arm, so bend on opposite arm and leg and release that down. Breathing in. Now we switch to the other combination of arm and leg. So you might recall this is like doing our swimming when we're on our fronts with our bellies on the mat. We do the same piece, but we work the other way. We're not going to go that speed. However, we're going to just continue, continue keeping it controlled. And if you want to take it at one more level for the level three as those people more advanced, if you want to think about pausing here and having a go and lifting all limbs and arms, you're more than welcome. You need a really big bringing in of the core and the pelvic floors, and this is a hold. If you're into your singles and you're doing your upside down swimming, continue for two more lifts and lowers. Don't forget to breathe, even if you're in an isometric hold. And this is our last one for everybody, whatever level you're doing singles, alternates, opposites, or oh, everyone down. Well done. Bring your legs into parallel and walk your heels up towards your bottom. Settle your lower spine on the mat, then draw your arms overhead. Come out of this safely, bring in then your knees into your chest and small circles. Wonderful. Okay, placing those feet back down and popping our hands now just behind our heads. Okay. Alrighty, so you know our little head hold is our hands behind the heads and our thumbs are on our neck. So I want you to make sure that you're lying down on the mat now, your feet are fairly firmly planted in the mat and you're lengthening that spine. Okay, let's just give it a little reminder that it need, we need that space between the vertebrae. So feel long from that tailbone, even if you did a little wiggle, a wiggle to get yourself nice and long in that spine, please go ahead. Then we take ourselves into our chin to throat space and our abdominal curl, where we're starting to lift our head, neck and shoulders off the mat. Once you've lifted, remind yourself to slide those shoulder blades back and down. Once you've come clear of the mat, sometimes we end up hunching in. Elbows in peripheral sight and our shoulder blades are down. Well done. Bring your right knee into your chest, please, and place it back down. Now we should be nicely supported in the back of the head. Our happy hammock should be nice and broad across these shoulder blades and spreading from elbow to elbow as we lift single knees to the chest. Breathe in, exhale. Okay, so again, this is our level one with the head nicely supported, knees coming into chest. For level two this morning, go ahead and bring your knee into your chest and pause. And I want you to gently let go of the head if you can. And you're gonna hold around the outside edge of your shin with your outside arm and your inside arm holds behind your thigh, okay? So you've got kind of something to hold on to here. Now go ahead and extend the other leg along the mat. So we're just reaching that leg to a point where it's almost in hover. And maybe if you can, you can lift your leg to about 30, 40 centimeters off the mat, okay? This is our readiness to single leg stretch. So let's just switch onto the other side where you're bringing the other knee into your chest. You're holding around the outside edge, outside arm onto your shin, inside behind the thigh. And again, stretch and reach your other leg either along the mat or lifted about 40 centimeters. Now we're going to switch to the first side and we're going to speed this up. Now we've got our positions. We're going to bring that knee in and switch knee in. Breathe in and exhale on the knee. Breathe in, exhale on the knee. Breathe in to switch. Now speed this up and feel the stretch of that knee towards you and the opposing foot away towards the end of the mat. Keep your chin tucked in and you are, of course, on your level two. So for those on level one, you're still staying down with your head supported and your knees coming in one at a time, as I'm showing you to remind you for three, for two, for one. And everybody feet back on the mat. If your head isn't supported, go ahead and bring yourself down onto the mat if you can and rest your arms by your sides. Okay, so that's our single leg stretch. We're going to take ourselves into our scissor kick now. I'd like you to bring your right leg up, up towards the ceiling and in extension. 
Okay, heads are down for the moment and just pause for a moment here. And place that leg back down. Go ahead, breathe in. Exhale and your left leg comes up to the ceiling now and have a little bit of a stretch. Don't forget, remind yourself to push your pelvis down. That back of the pelvis should be pushing down at the same time as you're trying to straighten the leg, okay? Now that is, of course, your phase one. If you can, I would like you to take your hands behind your head. And again, just to gently remind yourself the lengthening of the spine, shoulder blades backing down, draw yourself into your abdominal curl. And we've got a broad hammock behind those shoulder blades, okay? Now you can stay in this level and single leg lift. Okay, breathing in, exhale. So this is our next modification. However, I'm gonna ask you to think about now coming into your full scissors. So I'd like you to now pause with your right leg extended. Okay, and you go ahead and hold behind the calf muscle and you can extend the opposite leg away along the mat. Okay, so the other two levels are still available to you if you think, no, 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 this isn't for me. And then for those who are on this level, we're going to breathe in, exhale and switch. 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 Okay, keep going. I'm going to go faster. We're going to switch and switch and switch and switch for eight. There's quite a few. That's seven and six. Use that tummy to keep you high. Don't pull it on the neck. That's four and three and two and one. Well done. Hands are behind the head as you peel back down, feet are on the mat and pause there. Let's go ahead and enjoy that full mat stretch all the way from fingertips to toes. You're lengthening along the mat through the arms. Okay. I'm gonna take some wrist and ankle rotations here as well, just because I can, if you want to, if you're enjoying the full body stretch, then just go ahead and keep stretching or taking the wrists and ankles round in circles. Another opportunity, any opportunity is good. And then we're going to bring the hands down by your sides, taking one foot, bring it in towards your bottom and the other foot as well. Okay, so we're gonna move into our double leg stretch. Um, we're going to start off again with our hands behind the head. Now this is going to be with our lifted upper body. So I'd like us all to have hands behind the head, thumbs by our necks nice and long. Breathing in, exhale, and all of us lifting into abdominal curl. Shoulder blades back and down. Let's spread the weight nice and broad through the shoulder blades. Bring your right knee into your chest and your left knee into your chest. So I think most of us can hold this position. Now we're going to breathe in, and I'm going to get you to extend one single leg and back into your chest. Breathe in, exhale, and extend the other leg in. Sorry, extend the other leg out and back into your chest. One more time, singles. And one more time, single. Now we're going to attempt our doubles. We're going to breathe in and exhale as we send both legs away. Now this has got various levels. They can go almost to the ceiling, which makes it slightly easier for you. Or you can send them almost away 45 degrees, which of course is a little bit harder quite a lot harder to be honest okay so this is your double leg stretch choosing your level here of course you can be as I say 45 or up towards the ceiling adding on finally our arms overhead if you wish you have your hands coming overhead as your legs extend breathing in and exhale breathing in exhale last two Choosing whatever level you want to, you can eliminate that neck strain by hands behind your head at any time. And this last time, taking yourself down onto the mat, one foot at a time and peeling down your spine. Release the arms, knees into chest and a gentle rock from side to side. Okay, so we're going to bring ourselves into sitting. So you might want to take this rocking position and roll over towards the side of your mat and sitting up, or you can just gently peel yourself up maybe with one or two goes as you roll up and you're into sitting. Okay, so we're somewhere in the middle of the mat now and our arms are gonna be behind us. Okay. And quite wide with the arms, okay, for all of us this morning. And I think maybe shoulders, it's a big problem, fingers facing towards the back of the mat and shoulder blades back and down. So you'll probably all quite enjoy this feeling, not actually too uncomfortable for us. Our feet now come in a little bit more closely towards your bottoms, not really tucked up too high, your struggle with that um, um, restriction. So not just bring them up and now bring them together. So you're squeezing and gluing your knees, your inner thighs and your feet together. Now we've got those lovely feelings of um, 
uh, drawing in through the center, this midline of the body. I want you to now then grow through the crown of the head, lift and pull your upper body. That's it, gorgeous, well done. And nice and long through the neck, shoulder blades back and down. We need those shoulder blades back and down. That's our support. Now the belly is in and the pelvic floor area is strong. We are going to go into a TikTok where our knees go either side. Before we head into that, I'm gonna tell you what will happen. You will TikTok, and as you TikTok, your bum will start to wiggle down towards the end of the mat. Now that to me is a clear sign that you're not drawing in enough and controlling through your center. So you need to think about this as being the legs moving in the hip joint, and again, not about the pelvis, if you can. So let's go ahead and bear that in mind. We're growing nice and tall, bring in the pelvic floor, and you're almost weightless on those sit bones, yeah? Now, double legs are going to track towards the side of the mat, but you're trying to think about this happening from the thigh bone in the hip socket and not a whole collapse of the upper body. You draw yourself back to center and you should just put the sit bones in exactly the same spot they were when you started. Breathe in, exhale to the other side, letting the knees track, the shoulders still facing as much forward as they can, and then use your tummy and your pelvic floor area to realign the pelvis as to where it wants to start, okay? Breathe in, think about the pelvis coming back into that start position and not worrying about the knees and what they're doing. Breathe in and over we go to the side. Still continuing to go core strong, pelvic floors in as you come back to center. Okay, breathe in, exhale, let the thighs go to the side. They just happen to bring the pelvis across slightly at the same time, but it's about the thighs moving. And one more time. Okay, well done. Pausing here. And now we're going to add on, if you want, for our level two, we're going to take it into a single leg extension. So as you travel to the side this next time, the top leg is going to extend into a straight leg. The knee stays basically on top of the lower knee, there, thereabouts. And then you bring it back into its start position, foot by foot, and bring yourself back to center. Breathing in, exhale, and across we go and a single leg extension, and then back and to center. Breathe in and across we go, single leg extension. Now what's going on with those shoulders? Have we decided that we're getting a bit tired? Have we thought, okay, I know what I'm doing now, I don't need to worry. The shoulders are still pulling back and down. The torso is still nice and long. You're extending your leg, but you're also extending from your base of the spine to your head. Okay, we've got our final level. Let's go to the side. If you want, you can do nothing. You can do a single leg or you can take two legs and extend them to the side of the room, bringing yourself back to center and draw the core in. With a breath in, you exhale to the other side. Single or, single or double leg if you can, bring yourself back to center and pause. Breathe in, exhale. Single, none or double, extend and to center. Last time, breathe in, exhale, single, none or double, extend, and bring yourself back to center, and pause there, wonderful. Take both legs down towards the end of the mat, and they are glued together, toes towards the ceiling, and lift your arms into T for our spine twist. Okay, when you're ready, grow nice and tall, breathe in, and we're going to rotate to the side. Now, if you remember anything from last week, you may think about the front um, lung area and rib cage pulling slightly together and down and twist a little bit further. Perhaps you remember that te technique we had a go at last week. If not, don't worry, breathe in, exhale to the side. Front lungs expanding, rib cage slightly pulling together and twist a bit more deeply and come back to center. One more either side. Just take it nice and steady there, Julia, breathing in. Maybe not full range this week. Round to the side and gently bring yourself back to center and down. Okay, we're going to roll onto our tummies nice. So go ahead, rolling over. And our hands are on top of our hands. Our forehead is on top of the top hand. And before you even get to setting yourself with your head down on the, fore, on the, the hand, maybe remind yourself to bring the shoulder blades down. You might even need to pick the elbows up slightly and move them down towards the direction of your hips. And then you know that you've really got some space between those shoulders and ears, guys, okay? 
So just a reminder, shoulder blades are down, elbows are pulling down or lift them up and place them down, down close towards the direction of your hips. We're going to go into our diamond press. So we've been building up for a little while with this. You can, if you do not like back extension, to continue the work we did in week one, where we're pressing our arms into the front of the mat, and you're just simply going to pull yourself forward and forehead and nose float. That is a modification for anyone who does not want to go into back extension. It is just pulling the upper body forwards. Everyone else, that is still our start. So when you're ready, breathe in. Exhale, press your forearms into your mat like you're making dents. Pull yourself forward like you're lengthening that spine towards your crown. And then let's go ahead and nose and forehead float. From here, we're going to lift our gaze towards the front of the mat. Okay, so we're starting mini back extension. Now that might be enough for you. If you can, however, we're going to press into our hands, lift our elbows and lift our upper body and chest. So we're into a slightly higher level of back extension. Keep pulling yourself forward. Go ahead and pull yourself forward again for me. Okay, so you're feeling like that belly or the hip bones is slightly might roll forwards. And then we're gonna come down one vertebrae at a time, place the elbows down. Then we start to release the rib cage. And then you come down with head, nose, chin, and you're into your start position. Okay, four more. Pulling forwards, choose your level. Might be a float. It might just be lift up to the elbows. It might be a press of the hands and an arm extension. Okay, so work within your own range. Relax across the buttocks if you can. On the way down, we are always pulling ourselves up as forwards as we can along the mat before we release down and your chin, nose and forehead parking back on the hands last of all. Okay, lift, lift, lift. Work within your own range, of course pulling yourself forward as you release that down. And this next time we're going to hold high, okay? So if you're lifting and you're just staying on your elbows, okay, that is fine. You can do that by still pulling yourself forward and you're not actually lifting into extension. So this is a safe lift, okay? If you can, you're going up into your arms and we're holding there. So choose your level. Now we're going to go for our neck roll. Whatever level you're in, I want you to bring your chin to your chest. Okay, now I want you to take that chin and head it towards your right shoulder and look over your right shoulder. Now take your chin back to your chest and look over your left shoulder. Okay, take your chin down to your chest. One more time to the right shoulder. And chin comes down to your chest and left shoulder. And then come back to center. Release the chin from the chest slightly before we come back down, pulling yourself forward, whether you're on elbows or arm extension, doesn't matter, both the same principle. Pull yourself forward as you release your vertebrae down the front of your ribs and the front of your chest and your chin head onto your, um, onto your hands. Wonderful. Okay, so from here, we're going to just take ourselves into a sitting position. So we're going to roll over, okay. And this time we are going to take our hand and we're going to place them in towards our bottoms. Now, as the same with last week, you can choose. You can have your hands to be a bit easier, slightly wider, okay? So they're not in parallel with your bottom cheeks, but wider, so that's slightly easier. Equally, if you do struggle with fingers towards your bottom cheeks, go ahead and turn them slightly towards the side of you. That is fine, okay? All right, so you choose. I will show you the version with your hands towards your bottoms. Feet not too tucked in, okay, so we're not in bridge, but they're not miles away either. You want to have your feet flat on the floor if you can for me. And I want you to feel like you can now just put a bit of a press into the hands and a bit of press into the feet, okay? So you'll need to have your shoulder blades back and down and feel a bit of connection for me. So you're not just hanging out in the spine and pelvis. It's the feet and the hands that you're now going to use to support you. Next, nice and long, and we're going to attempt a single bottom lift. So when you're ready, breathe in, tummy in, pelvic floor strong, exhale as you just lift your bottom off the mat and lower back down, okay? Now I want you to think about the direction of travel of this bottom, okay? So sometimes the lift can be just a propulsion towards the heels, okay? That is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a lift as if it's going up a little tiny elevator and it's going straight up towards the ceiling. That's better, breathe in, exhale, lift. That bottom can just go up and down its little tunnel, up, it, up its chute towards the ceiling. 
then we've got two more. Breathing in, exhaling, big exhale, shoulder blades staying back and down. And last one. And come back down. As always, those triceps tire. So let's just pop them around and hug the front of your legs for a moment while I show you this next position. Okay, so let them just relax and chill out. Okay, so we've just um, alluded towards the movement of the bottom. Now we're going to use that and capitalize on the movement of the bottom by lifting up the elevator. That's the first stage. Keep looking, don't need to do a join in yet. Then we're going to let the bottom travel towards the heels. Then we're gonna bring it back into its elevator and down the lift we go. Okay, so you're gonna head up the lift. Maybe we just decide to step out the lift. Then we come back in and then we come back down. This is not a bending of the arms. Of course, if you need to bend your arms because it feels more comfortable, then go ahead. But I'm not trying to ask you to do tricep dips as well. Okay, that might be just too much after last week. Okay, all right, so pop your hands behind you. Choose your position that's comfortable for you. We're gonna get in that lift, breathe in. Exhale, let's go ahead and bring the bottom off the mat. Now, if you can, we're gonna step out the lift and send our buttocks towards our heels where you'll feel the stretch of the front of the arms. Then we come back into the lift and we track back down and we breathe. Exhale, we've got three more. Lifting and sliding forwards. Now, of course, if you don't want to do this slide, if you find like it's not comfortable, you can just go ahead and do the bum lift on its own. Okay, you can modify, eliminate bits and pieces if you want to. Okay, we've got one more, breathing in, exhale, lift, sliding forwards and come back into the lift and lower. Okay, again, releasing and hugging the legs forwards. Okay, we've got our challenge piece. One's always got to one challenge piece to try. So let's get ourselves into our position. Okay, that we started off with. All righty. So far, so good. We are not going to lift our bottoms, but I would like you to touch your left knee with your right hand and lift your right, left foot, sorry, left foot. So you're just gonna lift your left knee and foot and touch with your opposite hand. That's it, okay. Place it back down, breathe in. Right knee, right foot lifts and touch your right kneecap with your left hand and down. Breathe in, exhale and switch. Okay, breathe in, exhale, and switch. Breathe in. Now, of course, you might find that you've got quite a lot of flexibility. You might feel like you can get towards touching your toe. Okay, but I don't want that lovely pelvis to be twisting too much. This is just a challenge for those people who might not want to lift their bottoms because we're going to do this with our bottoms lifted. Okay, so we're going to modify now and we're going to take it up a level. So when you're ready, we're going to breathe in, and if you can, we're going to exhale and lift into our bottom lift. Now's the challenge. We're going to try and touch our opposite knee with hand, okay? So press into your right sole of the foot, into the right, so the left hand, and we're going to touch and lift your opposite leg, okay? Coming back to center. Now you might find that you can't do the lift. You might feel like the foot needs to stay on the ground. That is fine. You might want to just lift and touch. Okay, so that is a version you can do. Or you might want to just stay with your bottom down on the mat and you want to just continue with your lift and touch with the bum down because quite frankly, we need all the little bits of touch points we can. Okay, so it's totally up to you. You can be up with the bottom and just lifting the, the knee to touch the knee. You can lift the whole of the opposing leg and touch. Whatever level you're doing, we're gonna do two more on either side, working across the diagonals. Certainly working those arms. Slightly added on from last week. And that's gorgeous, bringing the bottom back down. And go ahead and take your legs forwards and they're going to be about hip width apart and arms are out towards the front for our lovely spine stretch forward. Hip width apart, toes pulled up towards the kneecaps and lift nice and tall. Now you might remember last week we were doing our lovely tree hugs. So I want you to think about that tree in front of you and just bending forward to give that tree a nice little hug. Then we take our knees and our noses towards our knees and we get our lovely spine stretch forwards. Okay, bring yourself back up, peeling every vertebrae up one by one and release the arms forwards. Breathe in. Hugging that tree and then down we go. Nose traveling towards the knee. Of course, it doesn't matter if it's nowhere near. You may be so flexible that those knees are too close and perhaps you're heading towards your shins, which is marvelous. Everyone is different. 
And really the prize is your own end of range. It doesn't matter where it is. You find that end of range and you breathe into it. If that is what we need to do for you, okay? And release those hands back down by your sides. Well done. Okay, so we're going to just take ourselves over into four point kneeling. We are not in four point kneeling, I promise. For those who I said I would never four point kneel this week, you'll be right. We are not because we're going to head into V stretch or downward dog. Now that means we need to tuck under our toes. So you're under the toes and we're pressing into the palms of the hands as we lift our bottom and kneecaps off the mat and we're into a lovely V stretch here. As I say, I do like a quick pedal of the feet. So I like to almost imagine I'm a little cat fluffing up my little nest or where I'm going to sit, making it nice and fluffy, pressing my heels down towards the floor, coming into a natural position. And now I'd like to wide, like you all to widen your legs to the, just towards the inside edge of your mat, okay? From here, we're now going to just push your pubic bone away from you and stretch the back of those legs. And I'd like you to see if you can take your right hand and reach it towards your left foot. Okay, so this is a nice strong stretch across the body. If you can peep out underneath your shoulders, then great. And then we're gonna take it to the other side. If you can't hang out here too long, then you can just switch from side to side. If you can hold and just let the stretch develop slightly, then go for it like you would do with a thread the needle or just switch from side to side if you just want to reach and you'd rather just not hang out in that shoulder joint too much. When you finish this last one, we're going to then now bend our knees and walk our hands back towards our toes, just really slowly so that the heels come to rest on the mat, your knees are now slightly bent, feet are wide. Shoulder blades back and down and belly in before you start to restack back to restack into your standing position and you're coming up slowly. And from the wide leg standing position, bring yourself back into the center of your mats, okay. Alrighty, we're going to breathe in for me into a double arm float. So just sinking into the soles of the feet, breathe in, exhale, lifting your arms up towards your sides. Turn your hands away from each of the palms away and then snow angel pressing the arms down by your sides, grow nice and tall. Breathe in and lifting your arms towards the ceiling, pausing here. I'd like you to go into lateral flexion towards the right. Over we go, like we've got a lovely beach ball. And now I want you to really push your hips out towards the left. Go ahead and really create that bar banana crescent shape. Okay, and come back through to center and bring your arms down by your sides. One more time, breathe in. Exhale, double arm float where we're heading with our arms to the left. And once you've got that lovely back, so lateral extension, over we go, so lateral flexion, over we go with the hips pushing towards your right. And come back through to center and release the arms back down by your sides. Well done. Let's close your eyes and take two breaths in. Lovely deep breaths. Filling across the lungs and growing as if you're just lightly hanging on the top of the mat surface there, breathing in. Feel weightless and tall. Exhale as you draw in and up through the pelvic floor area. Let's go ahead one more time, breathe in. Exhale, just get that zip and hollow. Pelvic floor strong, core nice and tight. Shoulders relaxed back and down, open your eyes. And we are done. Well done. Well done, folks. I hope that was a forgivable class <laughs> and it wasn't too dreadful. I hope you're okay, Julia, with the ribs. Okay, we've got some more nice movement of flexion in that upper spine, um, but hopefully not so much work on the arms. So good work, guys. Oh, uh, my dog's just come to join me. And hopefully uh, we will see you again either uh, next week um, or if it's a recording or see you in studio uh, sometime throughout the week. Okay, take care for now. Bye. Bye-bye.